Hello everyone, as the title suggests, in this video we're going to make a thingy. I can't remember what it's called. So first of all, I need to mention that we're not going to be using Squarespace's carousel block, so we're not going to be able to link through to individual blog posts or products or whatever. But we are going to be able to link through to like Instagram accounts and different pages on your website. So it's ideal for displaying client logos or Instagram posts or the full cast of NCIS. We are going to be doing a combination of things to make this though. So we're going to make a sort of montage in Photoshop and then we'll upload it to Squarespace and pass it through a div block. No, we won't. We'll pass it through a code block on loop. So we'll start off in Photoshop and I need to make a new document. So command N to open the new canvas making thing. And I want to make it really wide, but not too high canvas. So we'll go with 5,900 pixels in width and 390 high. I'm also going to set the pixels per inch to 72 and the background to transparent and then click create. And you can see we've got this weirdly long, but not too tall canvas that looks a lot smaller than it actually is. So we can zoom in and out on the canvas with command plus and command minus, control plus and control minus on a PC. And we can move around the canvas using the scroll bars on the side and bottom. Or depending on your mouse or trackpad, you might have that configured to move around the canvas as well. So I'm going to shift over to the far left of the canvas to start building this image. So as I said in the intro, you can design this to look however you want it to. Whether you want it to be a carousel of evenly spaced images, or a string of text, or Anthony Castellina's press photo on loop. Is that how you pronounce his name? Alexa, who founded Squarespace? Squarespace was founded by Anthony Castellina on the 1st of April 2003. Thank you. Squarry space. But to keep this quick, I'm just going to make a messy sort of montage of photos by dragging my images in one by one and then just positioning them as I go. So I'm going to leave a 40 pixel gap between each picture. You can leave a gap or no gap. As I say, it's entirely up to you. So this first image, I'm going to drag this in so it's almost touching the left edge of the canvas. And then we can use the arrow keys to nudge it around a pixel at a time until we get it touching the edge. And then while I'm holding shift, I'm going to press the right arrow key to move it 10 pixels at a time. And I'm also going to grab the edge to adjust the size. And then basically I'm just going to work my way across to the right of the canvas repeating this 40 pixel gap. So I'm not going to make you watch me making my way through this. So I'll cut away to this picture of some cows in party hats with a Commodore 64. And when we cut back I'll be at the end. Okay so I'm going to take this last image right to the edge of the canvas because I've already got a 40 pixel gap at the start. So if I leave a 40 pixel gap at the end as well, we'll be left with an 80 pixel gap between the last and first pictures when the image loops in Squarespace. If that makes sense. So I need to save this as a PNG because I want to preserve the transparency of the background. If I save it as a JPEG, basically the gaps in between the pictures will save white. And if your website's body colour is anything other than white, then this will show up between the gaps. So we go to File, Export and Save for Web Legacy. And then we'll select PNG24. And make sure that the transparency thingy is ticked. And Save, we'll give this a name. And we're done in Photoshop, but this is still quite a big file for the web, so you might want to compress it just a little bit more. A good option for this is a website called TinyJPEG. I'll leave a link in the description for this. But this can significantly lower your file size, and that makes this panda very excited. Once you're happy with your file size, then we can head into Squarespace. Okay, so I'm going to go to the section where I'd want to stick the slider, and we'll drop a code block into the page. And then in the code block, really simple, we'll go left angle bracket, div, space, class, equals, Quotation mark, slider, quotation mark, right angle bracket. Between these div tags, we'll go left angle bracket, div, space, class, equals, quotation mark, slider, hyphen, image, quotation mark, right angle bracket. All done, we'll hit apply and then save the page. And that's it for this part, so next we'll go over to the custom CSS. And first we'll add the slider image, so if we expand Manage Custom Files, and then we can just upload our slider. Once that's uploaded, we'll click into the editor and go dot slider, left curly bracket. Between the brackets, we'll go width colon 100% semicolon, and then we'll go overflow colon hidden semicolon. Outside of the brackets, come down the line and we'll add dot slider, space dot slider hyphen image curly brackets and then in between the brackets we'll go background hyphen image colon url normal brackets semicolon and then between the brackets we'll drop the url of the slider image so if we click between the brackets and then we're going to expand manage custom files again and then click on the file 
that'll place the URL of the image in between the brackets. Okay, we're going to come outside of those brackets down onto a new line. And we'll go width colon auto semicolon. Height colon 200px semicolon. Background hyphen size colon. We'll go 2950px space 200px semicolon. Then we'll go animation colon. And I'll call this one slide. We'll go 60s to start. And linear infinite semicolon. Next, all we need to do is add the keyframe to start the image moving. So I'll come down to another new line and we'll go at keyframes slide. Slide needs to exactly match the animation name we put in above, otherwise this won't work. We'll go curly brackets. Between these brackets, we'll go from more curly brackets. And then between these brackets, we'll go background hyphen position hyphen x colon 0px semicolon. And then I'm going to take a copy of this and paste it directly below. Then we just need to change from to two. And the 0px to minus the width of the background size from above. So minus 2950px. And there we go. We've got our slider sliding nice and slide initially. So if you think this is running too fast or too slow, you can adjust the speed by changing 60s. So you can have it moving slowly across the screen by open this to say 120. Or you can have it fired in a way at lightning speed by dropping this down to one. And also, as I mentioned earlier, let's say you've made an Instagram montage and you want to link this out to your Instagram account. To do that, you go back to the code block. And before the first dev, we'll put left angle bracket, A space href equals Quotation mark, quotation mark, right angle bracket. Remove the closing tag, we don't want that there, we want that down right at the bottom. Then between the quotation marks, we'll drop the link of your social media profile. And then we want it to open in a new tab as well, so it doesn't take us away from your website. So after the closing quotation mark, we'll leave a space and go target equals quotation mark underscore blank quotation mark. And that'll open the link in a new tab. So as always, thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, leave us a thumbs up below. If you're not already, consider subscribing to see more stuff like this. And hopefully, I'll see you in the next one. See ya.